everyone, welcome back. We are in Chris's shop today and we're going to do a little bit of maintenance. Oil change, oil temperature probe, new oil filter to keep my temperatures down here in August because it's pretty hot, and a new Earth X battery. What the size of the battery actually looks too small. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if I understand, we'll have a whole bunch of like pieces of wood or something in here to make the box fit. Yeah, so there's um, oh, it's not a piece of wood, it's a piece of there's a piece of foam, foam. yeah, yeah, to make it fit. Cool, to vent it, fuse for what is that for? There's a light that goes through the panel and the light will flash telling you the uh, health of the battery. So there's an electronics board in the battery that keeps it from over voltage, keeps it from under voltage, keeps it from overheating, um, and keeps it from draining too much. So if you leave your master on, it will automatically shut off after it gets to a certain point and say, no, no, there's something wrong here. Oh yeah, okay, like my truck. Yeah, and so it'll... <laughs> <laughs> Except your truck just goes dead, doesn't yeah, it? No, 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 it's got a thing. Okay, and so this, this electronic board in here is really what makes the battery smart. It makes it intelligent, so it, it can, it can yeah, okay. know what's going on. Yeah. wonder what the other battery weighs. This is saying 5.4 pounds. We'll eat the other one out and weigh it. Yeah. I'm dying. It's like 35 degrees in here. Even hotter. You like doing it. <laughs> okay, so I know that there's already people out there typing in the comment box. Lithium batteries, those are the ones that explode. There's no such thing really as a lithium battery. There's dozens of different kinds of lithium batteries. It's the chemistry and lithium is just the main component. This one, the chemistry of this battery is extremely safe. Go to the EarthX website and they show them with like a giant torch trying to set it on fire and it won't set on fire. There's some guy with a handgun shooting at it, and it doesn't explode, so it, it's extremely safe. I'll throw some stuff up on screen, put it in the description box down below. But the big takeaways today are weight savings, really happy about weight savings, and better cranking. Which will help with our electronic ignition. Yeah. That has kind of maybe not been 100% on start. Yeah, it needs, it needs a little bit more on starting, so that's going to help that. The starter motor will, will crank faster. So that's the old lead acid. Let's get it and have a look. It's not all lead acid. That's a. Is it a there's some glass mat in there, I think. Lead acid, non spillable. Not required to be serviced. I thought that there was some AGM in there as well. I, I might be wrong. Pilots never complain about their batteries, do they, Chris? No. Are they. My 8 a, my 8.30 a.m. needs a new battery today. It usually doesn't happen this time of year, but these are, so this battery, these are good ones and like, you know, five, six years, sometimes even more and not to pick on, but they will call it the pink one. The pink one, you got to fill with acid and everything like that. It's disgusting from a, like a worker standpoint or hazardous materials and stuff and you get acid everywhere and stuff. So these things were sort of, this is the XC. This was sort of the best right here that we can come up with. And we're, they're good for a number of years. So when Glenn leaves it here, I'll keep it and probably sell it for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, these, the lithium should be much, much better. Certified aviation does not run on Avgas or Jet A. It runs on paper. And so to, in order to install this battery, there's a half inch of paper, both sides. Holy, there is instructions. Yeah. <laughs> any guess? Any guesses on the weight of this battery? Uh, nine point four. Nine point four pounds. Yeah. Chris says nine point four pounds. Let's see. You ready? Yeah. 22, yeah, it's Monday. <laughs> 20, 22.77 pounds, and the other one is 5.4 pounds. I'm just gonna round it off and say I'm saving 15 pounds worth of weight. 17 pounds worth of weight. How 
How will that affect the weight and balance, Chris, with it coming in front of the firewall? Well, like, so the best scenario is, is far off as you can go. We're moving the center of gravity aft. Do you have a drawing? Chris is going to do a drawing. For the airplane, that's eater totter, right? And so in normal flight, the wing creates the lift. So you have your wing here, right? And then you got your tail here. And in order to act like a teeter totter, this points downward, okay? So this is positive lift here and negative lift there that creates the teetering effect of it, right? So it all plays about our center of gravity there, right? So if we move the weight back, right? That means that we need less vector here, which means that there's less drag. All lift is making drag. And so in this case, with the scenario with the center of gravity here, right, this vector is longer. So there's this vector, the drag, and this vector with the drag, right? So now we move the center of gravity back to here, right? This vector gets shorter, that drag vector gets smaller. This one remains the same, right? So there's less drag on an airplane with a aft center of gravity, right? To a limit until it falls off, until it gets too far back, and then it falls off the teeter color. I think I understood that. <laughs> I think I understood that. So, by moving it 17 pounds. So, you, we're going to take 17 pounds. So, so, to look at it on the airplane now, generally, we're going to look at looking at this area of the wing. It's a percentage of core. So, our center of gravity needs to act in this area, right? Yeah. And so, if we're adding the weight or removing the weight from the tail or adding the weight at the front, we're, we're pushing the center of gravity forward. If only slightly so far, let's say just for example, where our center of gravity is here, it's now going to move because we took weight off the, f or we're taking weight off the front, which actually moves it back, which is positive. So that's a good thing. By removing weight forward of the center of gravity, we actually move the center of gravity back, right? Which is, it was good. So this is actually enhanced performance. When I do the weight and balance, we can see how much it moved. Right, probably it's not much off the center. It's only about this far from the where the center of gravity is, so it might move only a quarter inch. But if it was right back in the back of the tail, it would move a ton because of the lever up there. Yeah. So we'll see. I'll add her up and we'll come up with a number. At the top of the battery, there are two vents, and there's tubing that you have to put in, and then the two vents merge into one and then go through the bottom of the battery box and out through. Um, uh, in this case, the little bumps on the battery, ba the bottom of the battery box for these Cessnas, the little bumps were worn out. And so I dr the, we drilled the one that was worn out and we're going down through there. So the original drain is sort of center on the battery box and the new drain is going to, like it's going to vent right off the top and go right out a hose and probably hook in the same place as the original venting went. So it's double venting. Double vented. Kind of got her in there. Now this block will go like so. Like that. Our battery. Like that. Get really smooth about this. down under here to be able to go over and catch this guy which is the original one yep. that's the one i just had it on and back okay here we go but this will show voltage here 13 one yeah hmm. that's pretty good Yep, so load her up a bit, see how she takes her. 12, 9, still better than you were. Yeah. Okay. No prop.
Okay, here we are. We're all trimmed out. We're flying. The new EarthX battery is in. Um, you might have noticed from the startups, it starts much faster. It's got a stronger start. Um, not that the plane was any slouch in the start in the past, but it's really it really catches quickly now because I get a really good turn, a really good spin on that prop. Um, I'm really happy with the battery. Here's for me. Without a doubt, I love new technology, I love trying new things, I love anything that brings this plane into the 21st century. This is a 1961 aircraft. It needs a lot of a lot of help to bring up the safety and to make it more usable in this in this time period. Uh, but the thing that totally sold me was I was going to I was going to get 18 pounds of usable load. The battery was 18 pounds lighter than the battery that came in this aircraft or the one that was already in this aircraft. To me that weight savings is worth the entire the entire thing. First and foremost for me. I know other people will have other priorities, but for me it was that weight savings. Um, there's always there's always cons with uh, with anything you do in an aircraft. There's always a give and take. So it's not just a drop-in replacement. Your mechanic, your AME, or in the United States, I don't know if it's an AMP or an AI that needs to do it anyway. Here in Canada, I had to get Chris to do it because it's an STC. There's paperwork involved. I mean, it's not a lot of work. It's a couple hours. There's a, uh, an, a light here that we put on the dash um, that will blink for uh, warning. It's a warning light. We put the light in because I wanted to see how long it was going to take. We could have wired this, instead of putting this warning light here on the dash, we could have wired it into the Dynon um, and there would be a little thing here down at the bottom that would give me the same warning light in the PFD. Uh, for whatever reason, I said, Chris, let's let's put this in. Let's just see how, it, how, it, how long it takes. Total installation time, maybe two hours. Uh, a little bit of paperwork, like I said, the biggest thing was adjusting the voltage regulator. So one of the first things that Chris did with this aircraft was take out the original 1961 Cessna voltage regulator, tossed it in the garbage, and put on a plain power voltage regulator because at the same time we did an alternator. We changed from a generator to an alternator. So we updated the entire system. And it's got a little pot that you can change the uh, how much voltage it's outputting to the rest of your equipment. And dialing that in, I think, was the most the most difficult part of the installation. Seems this battery wants to have your voltage between 4.2 to 4.5. Um, that gives you the best charge, or seems to this point to give you the best charge. It's a little freaky after you start up the aircraft and you sort of climb out. You'll notice an amperage spike, not a high amperage spike, but your amperage will go up as the battery's drawing in power to uh, to recharge after the start. But at this point, I've flown a few hours with this battery, um, and I'm really happy with it. Like I said, 18 pounds. That's all, all day long, I'm gonna talk about 18 pounds. Um, and in terms of the chemistry, if you're thinking about it and you're worried about lithium batteries because you've been told lithium batteries are a problem, look up the specific chemistry of this battery and it'll put your mind at rest. Watch the videos of them, you know, blowing up the battery, burning it with a flamethrower, shooting it with a gun. Um, it's perfectly safe. Perfectly, perfectly safe. One of the other things I did earlier today was I flew, I didn't put the cameras on because I wanted to concentrate on the test, but I flew the aircraft, I turned off the alternator. So the alternator was not providing any power to the panel. We were running completely on the battery. Um, when I turned off the alternator, I had 13.8 volts. I ran for an hour um, with the alternator off. My voltage dropped to 12.5, uh, which is well within an hour is a fantastic. With everything on, I didn't turn anything off. I left all the lights on, all the panels on. Um, and it's worth mentioning that the Dynon system, all three of these have their own backup battery inside so that if the alternator dies and if the ship's battery dies, these will still stay live because then it kicks into the, its own backup battery. 
Um, and you have to test that at annual. And in order to pass the test at annual, the battery needs to run for, I think, 45 minutes. But I do know that I have run the battery, um, the backup battery on both of these panels for an hour and a half before it dies. So plenty of power. If the alternator dies, plenty of power. I'm really happy with, with what's going on here. It's all working so well. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, the next video will be me flying westward back out to Steinbach to finish my instrument rating. Um, and maybe some fishing along the way. I'm really excited about doing some fishing. I haven't fished in 35 years, maybe. Um, whew, it's been a long time. It's, university was the last time I went fishing. And that was a while ago. So maybe we'll do some fishing. Thanks for stopping by. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you want to see.